Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, joined now by the head coach, Clay Helton, who's uh, locked up the rest of his signees today. And uh, pretty clear today, the emphasis was on defensive back. He signed seven <laughs> guys, five of them play in the defensive backfield. And looking at your roster and depth chart, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know, we came out of the early signing period saying that we garnered a couple DBs that we thought could really help. But when we were looking at, you know, coming out of this year, we lost seven DBs off our roster, have one that's a senior this year, so eight DBs within a year's time. Um, really felt that we needed to bolster that position, not only for the immediate future, but also for our extended future. So um, it happened to be a really good DB year, both on the West Coast and nationally. Uh, pulled a great defensive back out of Texas is in Dorian Hewitt, uh, Britton Allen out of Florida, uh, Adonis Sote uh, out, of, out of Tennessee. So uh, we went national at that position just because of the need that was there. Uh, and really, I credit our staff. We, we stepped up the plate to hit a home run, and they did. Coach, what's the strategy when you have to do this two times? We went, we met last last month to talk about recruiting and who we got that day, and now you got to kind of gear it up and do yeah. it again another time. What's that? Yeah. What's the strategy for you guys like uh, doing it twice? Well, a year? It, it's two different realms of thought. I mean, it literally it now having been through it twice, you get done playing on November 29th, and hopefully you're playing till December 5th, like we did a year ago, and then all of a sudden you look up and you got two weeks to go see literally 25 kids and their families, and your tra planes, trains, and automobiles trying to get there, being able to see their families, see their future plans, what they're going to do. Um, and we were able to, you know, sign 19 kids that are with us. Ten of them are already on campus right now. You know, so then you go back and you say, okay, when you hit that period of time, there's such decision-making in the process that you say, okay, do you just are we just trying to fill up or there's some kids out there that we really got to fight for. And, and the two best examples that really come to my mind are, are just both at the wideout position, just happens to be. But you sit there and it's, it's, it's that midterm sign. Are you going to go try to fight for, uh, fight for Amon Ross St. Brown and Kyle Ford? Uh, or are you just going to fill up and just to sign, to sign body? sign somebody and we haven't done that you know we've taken the approach that we're going to try to get 75 to 80 percent of our class done and then try to get the best talent uh that we where we need where we need it the most well you fought for kyle ford and you got him um and you know somebody that that, that maybe you certainly need down the line as much as you need now uh, i mean how special of a playmaker are we talking Oh, mercy. Yeah. He, he reminds me of the guy that was in the building today, Juju yeah, good Smith. Juju. Schuster. Yeah, he's, he was a, around today. But I, I've told Kyle for a year now that's what he reminds me of, just the physicality that he brings to the game, uh, especially at the catch point. Such strong hands, plays above the rim, um, tremendous catch radius and body control. And Juju had those type of things. He just had a knack of getting his body between the defender and the ball and coming down with those strand, strong hand catches. Coach, you had a couple guys who enrolled early here. How 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 much importance is is that when these guys can come in early and get that that spring ball together with them yeah. and, and to get into rolling to fall? Is that is that something that you find to be important, or is, is oh, this something you like yeah. to do? I mean, I, I think about the guys that we've had, and, and the one that just jumps out to my mind is Cam Smith. I remember him reporting just like these guys were doing, and it was not as popular back then. But yeah. now, you, you know, you, you're getting 10, 12 yeah. guys a year that are coming, graduating early, wanting to get that extra academic. Uh, semester as well as garner another training camp and, and you know how it is I mean you get into a college-based system from training to eating to sleeping yeah. and all of a sudden you're Drake Jackson who walked in here at two, 256 pounds and five weeks later he's 276 yeah. you know th those are things that you know just don't happen unless until you enter a college program and so to be able to have those guys here uh, them learning our systems that are going in and to play garnering that training, getting that extra training camp, as well as getting 16 units uh, of free education, man, that, that goes a long way for a kid. So I'm really happy with the kids that we got here currently on. You know, you've been around the college football game your whole professional life, but you've been a head coach now for, you know, for the last four years. And I'm curious, what lessons have you learned or what, what, what have you changed in, in terms of what you're looking for maybe mm -hmm. four years ago as, as opposed to now? Is, is there anything that's changed in the sense that, that, that you – you realize something that you know either the type of player you're looking for or a certain mentality or something you know that's changed a little bit that you've learned over the years yeah you know i always ask myself these questions it's so easy to find talent I right. mean, that, but do they love the game are they willing to compete do they not feel entitled do they have great work ethic 
do they have the ability to learn and most importantly to take coaching? You, you know, those are things that you got to dig into and really discover about a player because I've seen a lot of talented players that don't make it because they don't have the intangibles that are so important to develop into your final product of what you are. Um, and, and that's what I challenged our staff with uh, is really get to know these kids. Don't just watch a highlight tape. Go to the practice. Go to the game. See their body language, not only after a good play, but a bad play. How did they react? How did they lead? Are they a team captain on, on, their, on their football squad? You know, find out what makes them and see if they truly love the game because that stuff is going to transfer over to what they do in college. Man, you listed a lot of things. I don't know if I would have made all those check marks. Man. I, I, was, I, was still figuring, allure, I was still, I was yeah. still figuring myself yeah. out of anything. The man. These guys have it all together now. Yeah. Sean would have been too much for anyone to pass yeah. up. He would have seen you one time and yeah. said, "I got to have that big yeah. fella." I, you hit quarterbacks really hard. <laughs> there, there, That's there's what a, I like to there, do in my there's head. There's a difference with defensive linemen like you. If you if you if you, if you find guys like yeah. that, we'll we'll take a couple check backs off. <laughs> yeah, one other thing I wanted to ask about maybe the, the shifting landscape is how much more competition are you seeing in your backyard from national programs? Mm -hmm. You know, it's it seems like uh, the SEC, the ACC, the Big 12, you know, they are seeing as fruitful as California can be, and, and yeah. you're having to fight them off as much as you are, you know, Pac-12 teams. Yeah, well, one of the things that everybody realizes is how, how special Southern California is in the West Coast. I mean, on average, there's 123. Pac-12 players signed a year just in Southern California alone from Fresno South. So, and we can only sign just like today, 26. Yeah. 22 of the 26 are West Coast kids. 16 of those kids come right from Southern California. But there's still a lot of players left and you are going to go nationally. You're going to look at Florida and they had one West Coast kid. Alabama didn't take a West Coast kid this year. Tennessee garnered a West Coast kid. We went out, got one kid from Texas, one from Florida, one from Tennessee. You're going to acquire that national talent and bring it back home. Um, and there's so much great talent out here west, and there's only 12 of us out here, uh, you know, and there's yeah. still a lot of talent. So it, teams are naturally going to come out, just like we go to the East Coast and Gardner, Adonis Ote, and Dorian Hewitt, and, and, and Britton Allen. Teams are going to come out here and, and try to get good kids to try to get to their program. All right, I want to look forward a little bit and – I'm guessing you must finally feel a little bit settled now. You spent the last two months trying to build a recruiting class, trying to build a coaching staff. I mean, I imagine you were in constant motion at that time. Do you feel like now you can turn forward and say, okay, I know what my 2019 roster is going to look like. I know what my staff is going to look like. Now I can go. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting back with our current guys that are currently on campus. And, you know, that, that we've been around the workouts this week. Uh, I, I thank so much for – the program that Keith Belton and the rest of our strength staff has led our guys, as well as Coach Baxter, while we've been out on the road. Uh, but we have the next three weeks to be able to install our systems, to be around our kids, to be involved in the, the morning workouts in the winter program, uh, and really prepare for what's uh, going to be an extremely valuable spring training camp for us in a lot of ways, both from an X's and O's standpoint, but really more importantly from a fundamental technique standpoint, a discipline standpoint, learning that penalties and turnovers are going to cost you those close games like they did at the end of last year. Um, and so the, I just can't wait to get there and get the emphasis going and teaching these kids. These kids are really in a great frame of mind right now just watching them work, and they're so together. I'm looking forward to getting back on Monday and getting started with them over the next three weeks. Coach, I think you've mentioned uh, getting into the detail of the game. That's going to be what your job in spring is to really emphasize the details. How do you exactly do you go about really – <laughs> emphasizing those points of, 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 that you saw in the team last year that you need to get fixed. Yeah, you, you know, it starts with fundamental and technique because I think if you don't have the proper fundamentals and techniques, one, you're going to get beat. Uh, you're you're going to be, get beat physically. But you know how many times that just improper footwork mm -hmm. or being out of position caused penalties. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden you get handsy, you get grabsy. Those lead to, those lead to penalties. So those fundamentals are going to come into play. Situational mastery, understanding the game, that in today's college football, 
football game as well as a pro football game, all of a sudden uh, quarterbacks running down the sideline getting ready to step out. Do you really want to take that hit? Do you want to really make it close and take that penalty? So there's situational mastery that has to be taught. There's got to be an unbelievable sense of urgency of the discipline of protecting the football and getting the football back. Um, and that's one of the things that, as I look, we lacked getting the football back as, as well as securing it, especially in some very tight games last year that ended up being the difference. So, you know, I'm going to allow the coordinators to do their job. They're going to install the system. They're going to install the X's and O's. My primary focus is going to be making us a better team, a disciplined team that pays attention to the little things that win football games. Yeah, speaking of those coordinators, you settled on an OC, uh, Graham Harrell. Obviously not an ideal situation when you, you, you hired Cliff Kingsbury, clearly the guy everyone in the country wanted. So in, in that sense, uh, you hired mm -hmm. the best guy. Yeah. But, uh, you know, certainly the NFL thought so too, and, and they take him for a head coaching job. But, you know, I heard you say earlier today you sort of tipped your hand. They're from the same tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, again, and, and you can explain this and clarify this, they're not necessarily pure air raid. Mm -hmm. I think North Texas threw it like 55% of the time last mm -hmm. year, and Mike Leach at Washington State is mm -hmm. up above 70%. So that's a pretty big difference right mm -hmm. there. But what is it that you like about Graham Harrell, and what is it that you like about this system that you're that you're clearly committed to? Yeah, you know, in in calling the last four games, the one thing that stood out to me is how much how how special our skill players are, yeah. and, and and our quarterbacks on this team are, um, and and to be able to use them, uh, you know, I had a special gift in Tim Drevno, who's a great run game coordinator as well as pass protection. I was looking for an elite passing game mind. I went uh, that last half of uh, the first half of the Notre Dame game and I'm sitting there and, and our quarterback's like 85% he's yep, thrown for 250 yards I'm like mercy this is this is who we are yeah. and I always said that it, it, it would be so neat to be able to see our type of players in that system what it could do um, and and so we went out and we and we hired Cliff and um, we're so happy for him to get that opportunity to go be a head coach that's a once in a lifetime opportunity um, and we did we hired that's why we brought him we right. hired because we want uh, we wanted a great guy well guess what Graham Harrell's a great guy too and and yes we did tip the tip our hand and be able to show that hey we were looking for a passing game mind and Graham Harrell took a North Texas offense that was 124th in the country to number 20 in the country offensively he made a top 10 quarterback in Mason Fine as well as rushing for two thousand yards and that was the difference to me of what cliff and graham do other than maybe different than mike uh, coach leach is the ability to still run the ball and keep it a threat to be able to have that many passing yards that graham had last year with the ability of still having two thousand rushing yards and that was really intriguing for me so to get him here to see that it was a great fit for him a great fit for us uh it's been really a perfect marriage and, and really can't get what can't wait to get started this spring with it Coach, you're able to bring some guys back that you formerly coached as GAs in, in Viani mm -hmm. and, and, and Chris Hawkins. What's yeah. that like to have some of your former players oh. kind of learn how to coach under you and, and you kind of installing those values in them? Well, we say faith, family, and football, and they're my family, and they know what I'm about. Um, they have a love for this university. They have a love for coaching, uh, and it's just so uh, – it's it gets the hair standing up on your neck to say, man, our coaching staff touched three young men – that want to do this now for a living and that they want to be coaches and make that their lifestyle and to be able to coach them as players and now coach them as young coaches. Uh, that's about as special as it gets. Uh, Full and, circle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and, and to have three guys that love this university that much and so dedicated to it, that's a special thing. That's something you don't turn down. And we all with Trojans take care of Trojans and, and those guys uh, are, are not only going to, were they great players, they're going to be phenomenal coaches. You know, the uh, sort of off-season head coach of a football college football program is the strength and conditioning coach because you, there's rules about how much time you can spend with the guys. So the strength and conditioning coach is really uh, shines uh, this time of year. Ivan Lewis gets a great opportunity, goes up to reunite with Pete Carroll and, and the Seattle Seahawks. So technically that spot's open, although Keith Belton is running it now. Uh, what, what are you looking for in terms of a, a strength and conditioning coach? Well, you know, we were very fortunate to have Ivan and very fortunate to have Keith as well as Danny Van Dyke and Josh Heidegger continue to lead our program. You know, one of the things that's so important in the strength and conditioning aspect is he is the voice for you. Uh, I mean, he is. He develops your culture. He develops the tough, toughness, the discipline 
discipline in the strength and conditioning program. Obviously, they have to have the knowledge uh, of what it is to develop players to play the game of football, whether it's functional movement, whether it's strength, whether it's conditioning, knowing the sports science aspect uh, of the job to be able to garner some advantages yeah. that there is, is in, in today's game. But overall, for me, it, it's so important that 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 guy is just a representation of who you are and he's your additional voice because you're right i mean he's around the guys 80 percent of the time a, a lot more than uh, our position coaches that only get 15 days with them you know in the spring and then are right back on the road they're with that strength coach so he's your right arm as a head coach Coach, you had a couple kids enter the, the transfer protocol. Mm -hmm. what, what's that like? What's your message to the players on your team and uh, the, the guys who are leaving? And mm -hmm. what kind of is it, does it speak to the, to the level of college football right now, the, the, the kind of the atmosphere mm -hmm. that that has? Well, I, I think all head coaches and all universities understood that um, – when the portal was created this year, that it would make a difference. Um, it gives the opportunity for young men to, to transfer more easily uh, without having to ask permission. And you knew we knew the numbers would be great. And, and it's not only USC going through that transition, it's everybody. You know, as of right now, there's over 2,000 2, football players that are in the transfer portal. 1,400 of them, uh, 1,400 of them are Division One football players. You know, so everybody's going through this, and it's so important that you manage your roster uh, both uh, in recruiting uh, as well as the needs that are maybe in the future. But for a young man, you know, that we had some graduate transfers, and one of the beautiful things about SC is you can't graduate here in three years. Yeah. And we've had some young men that have taken advantage of that and gotten their degree, um, and they're looking for larger roles. They're good, they're good kids. They're good players. They had a great experience at SC. And, and now they're looking to, to even develop their role even more. And, and uh, you know, as a head coach, you, you want every kid to walk out of here with a degree and to have a great college experience. And, you know, uh, when you have 110 men and only and only 11, 11 of them can get on the field at a time, you know, that, that happens. As always, appreciate your time. The head coach, Clay Helton, wrapping up National Signing Day. Sean Cody will be back to wrap up Trojans Live next on ESPN LA 710.